Most of these shots were taken in this tiny garden. Except for the mushrooms. They are up in the Great Park by the Cobber Horse. I've not seen mushrooms in this garden yet. OK, let me show you how I went about getting these shots. Let's start with the camera. I'm using the Canon 6D Mark II, which is a full frame DSLR. And it's great for low noise when using a higher ISO value. I'm also using my Sigma 105mm macro lens. The beauty of a macro lens is that the focal distance is much shorter than a regular lens, meaning I can get pretty close to the subject and fill the frame as much as possible on that one-to-one -one macro ratio. So with a non-macro lens, I'd need to be much further away to be able to focus, and therefore I'm not going to fill as much of the frame with the subject as I would with a macro lens. For shots where the subject's moving, I'll also use this flash along with this modifier. The main reason I use a flash, even on a sunny day, is focus. I want as much of the subject to be in focus as possible. Now as the insect's going to be moving around, I'm not going to be able to take multiple shots, each at a slightly different focus point on the insect's body, and then stack them all together into one image using software later. Because the insect's going to be changing position between each shot, and therefore all these shots won't align. So I'm going to have to take this in one shot. Therefore, I want to have a reasonably narrow aperture, say around f8 or f9, maybe even narrower, so that I have a good depth of field to get as much of the subject in focus as possible. However, a narrow aperture reduces the amount of light reaching the camera sensor. And with the subject moving, I'm also going to need to keep a pretty fast shutter speed, say upwards of one over a thousandth, in order to freeze any motion. And the faster the shutter speed, the less light reaching the sensor. This only leaves me with the option of raising the ISO to get a good exposure. But if I raise the ISO high enough for that good exposure, I'm going to get an awful lot of noise in the image. Using a flash brings in a lot more light, which enables me to keep the ISO down, reducing the noise. The sync speed of a regular flash will be in the region of a 1 over 200 of a second. So you'll have to slow your shutter speed to no faster than this, but that should still be sufficient to reduce the ambient light uh, because the ISO has also been dropped. By keeping the shot underexposed without the flash, you'll have the added benefit of using the flash to freeze any motion of the inset, as the duration of the flash is so fast in comparison to the length of time that the shutter speed is open for. The modifier helps to soften the light, reducing harsh shadows. For soft light, the larger a light source is in relation to the subject, the better. So whilst this modifier is fairly small, probably not what I'd use for a portrait shot of a person, in relation to an insect I'm shooting today, it's still relatively large. For a lot of these shots, I'll be handheld. Most insects tend to move pretty fast and don't stay in the same place for long. So I'll be moving around with the camera, changing composition to try and get them into frame. So with insects, it's the same as when taking portrait shots of people or even photos of any other animal. The best place to focus is the eyes or the head. As Shakespeare and probably many others said, the eyes are the window to the soul. And this rings true for any creature we look at, as well as humans, if your natural instinct draws us to the head and the eyes first. For stationary subjects, I tend to use autofocus, selecting a single central point, but not tracking. That way I can quickly focus and get some shots off before the insect moves. I don't use tracking because that relies on me being able to hold the insect right in the middle of the camera viewfinder at all times for the tracking to work. And with it moving around, that's not always going to be successful. If I'm trying to get an insect in flight, first of all I'll watch them for a bit. See if I can determine any patterns to their flight. For example with the bees, I saw that when they came out of the flower, they tend to go down a little and then to one side or the other. So what I did was to view from a bit of an angle to the side and focus on either the near or the far edge of the flower and then recompose and wait. Then as the bee moved out, I'd fire the shutter, which also fires a flash. And if it was quick enough and the bee went to the same side that I'd focused on, I'd catch it. So the key now is patience. If you take your time, you've got more chance of uh, an insect staying around for you to get a decent shot of it. If you just jump in, there's more chance of scaring it off. Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed this. Please do remember to like, subscribe and let me know any comments down below. See you next week.